this tu tu tutorial, uh, we will be talking about Swift operators. The topics that I'll be covering are assignment operator, arithmetic operators, remainder operator, unary operators, compound operators, comparison operators, ternary conditional operators, nil coalescing operator, range operators, and finally logical operators. An operator is a special symbol or phrase which is used to check, modify, or combine values. Examples of some basic operators in Swift are arithmetic operators, assignment operator, and comparison operators. There are three main types of operators in Swift. Uh, unary operators have one input argument or one operand and it could be prefix or postfix. Um, by prefix uh, I mean the operator, in this case the exclamation point, appears before a parameter name, in this case x, and by postfix I'm talking about the operator appearing after the parameter, in this case the exclamation point appearing after the parameter x. The second type of operator uh, is uh, binary operators. Binary operata operators take two input arguments or two operands. They are of type infix, which means that they appear between two values or two parameters. In this case the addition operator here appears between uh, our x and y parameters. Finally ternary operators uh, take three operands. There's only one ternary operator in Swift. Uh, it's called the ternary conditional um, operator and it's shown here. This will be discussed uh, in the future slides. We are already familiar with assignment operator. An assignment operator is used to set or reset the value of a parameter. Uh, an assignment operator is an infix operator, which means it appears between two parameters. Some examples of assignment operator is shown here. In the first example, we are declaring a variable called x and assigning a value of 100 to it using the assignment operator, which is shown here as an equal sign. We could also use the assignment operator to reassign or reset the value of a of a variable. Um, we could use the assignment operator in conjunction with tuples. We've seen this before as well. So what we do here is that we are assigning the elements of a tuple to a series of variables or constants on a one-to-one -one uh, basis. So in this case we are setting the value of x to be equal to 100 and the value of y to be equal to the string hello. Uh, one thing to bear in mind that the assignment operator which is shown by a single uh, equal sign should not, should not be confused by the comparison operator uh, equal to which is shown by two equal signs. Arithmetic operators are also uh, uh, familiar to, to everyone. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. They are all of type infix, so they all appear between two parameters. Examples of uh, 
arithmetic operators are shown here x plus y, x minus y, x multiplied by y and x divided by y uh, the arithmetic operator uh, plus or addition uh, can be also applied to strings in Swift and by doing so we convert two strings into one uh, string so in other words the addition operator uh, is used for concatenating uh, two individual strings into one string remainder operator is used uh, in connection with the division operator the symbol used to show the remainder operator is the percentage sign and the two arguments or the two parameters used with the uh, remainder operator are, are, are both integers the remainder operator is also an infix operator and what the remainder operator does when we have something like this a uh, remainder operator b it calculates the value of a parameter called k uh, where k times b, where b is the second parameter here, uh, plus r uh, is equal to the value of a. r here is the remainder, which is returned by the operator. Um, the properties of k uh, are important. The first property is that the absolute value of k is equal to the largest integer such that the absolute value of k times b is less than or equal to absol absolute value of a. The sign of k times b uh, is such that it is equal to the sign of a. Here are some examples of the remainder operator when uh, applied to 10 and 4 using this arrangement here we see that the value of k is equal to 2 and the value of r is equal to 2 the absolute value of k is determined based on this and the sine of k is determined such that the sine of 2 times 4 in this case is equal to the sine of 10 uh, let's have a look at, look, look at another example here uh, minus 10 and minus 4 so again we use this relationship to come up with these numbers and we use these properties to uh, use to come up with the correct values of k so the absolute value of k which satisfies this relationship is 2 in this case and the sine of k which satisfies this relationship is going to be plus because plus 2 times minus 4 is minus 8 the sign of which is minus and that would be the same sign as the sign of a which is again minus uh, there are two unary operators in Swift uh, the plus operator and minus operator the plus operator actually does nothing whatever parameter appears after the plus operator is returned or it can be uh, the, the plus operator can be thought of as plus one times the value of the parameter that the plus operator is being applied to the minus operator negates the parameter uh, which it which it which it is applied to so in other words minus y is equal to minus one times y whatever the value of y is compound operators are uh, shorthands for the combination of the assignment operator and a second operator compound operators are infix operators here are some examples of compound operators for instance a plus assignment sign B means that 
B is added to A and the result is reassigned to A. So instead of having, uh, instead of writing A twice in this statement, we drop one of the A's and move the plus sign and put it before the assignment operator resulting in a plus an assignment operator as shown here. Similarly we could have uh, the compound operators for minus uh, an assignment operator, division an assignment operator, multiplication an assignment operator. Uh, comparison operators are used to check the validity uh, of result of comparison of two parameters and then return a boolean true or false as a verdict. So there are some examples here. Uh, the first one is the equal to operator. So we are saying here whether A is equal to B. So we want to see whether this is valid or not. And depending on whether these two are actually equal, if they are equal, we return true. Otherwise, we return false. A not equal to B. Uh, also returns uh, a boolean, true or false, depending on whether A is, is or is not equal to B. If it is equal to B, we return false, and if they're not the same, we return true. A greater than B, A less than B, A greater than equal to B and A less than equal to B are four other comparison operators and again depending on uh, the correctness of of these uh, statements we will return true or false. Comparison operators are typically used in conditional statements such as uh, the example below where we use an if statement and we're saying that if A is equal to B, so if this is true we do something, if A is equal to B is not true, it is false, we don't do anything. Ternary conditional operator is has a format like this, this, this is the format we saw before so as the first parameter we have a question um, then we follow that by the first operator which is called which is an, a question mark then we have one of the two answers answer one and answer two which are separated by a colon this is effectively a shorthand for this if statement we are saying that if the question, the first parameter, is true, this operation will return answer 1 as a return value, otherwise it returns answer 2. Here is a simple example. We are having a constant which is set to be equal to 2, a second constant y which is set equal to 5, then we are saying this is this is our operation here. Our question is whether x is less than or equal to y. So the answer is yes it is. So this is true and because this is true we are returning the first answer, answer 1, which is 10 in this case. So 10 is returned as a result of this operation and assigned to value as the value of z. If x less than y was false then the second answer which 
is 5 in this case would be returned and assigned to value of z. Nil coalescing um, operator in Swift is an infix operator. It is shown by two question marks. The first uh, um, parameter of this operation is an of is of an optional type and B is a default value. This will be clarified in a moment. This operation is a shorthand uh, for this ternary conditional operation. So what we're trying to do is we first check whether A, which is a, an optional, um, contains a non-nil value. If that is the case, this operation will return the unwrapped version of A. If this is this, this if this is not true, we the operation will return the value of B, which is our default value, as was mentioned here. Here's some uh, an example. We have a set of uh, variables and constants here. X is set to be equal to 2. Y is an optional. It's not set to anything, so it contains the default value of nil. Now, we are having a third variable, Z, and using the nil coalescing operator here, we first check for whether Y is containing a non-nil value which is not the case. The value of y is nil because it has not been assigned a value. So if because this is non-nil, uh, we don't unwrap y. We go to our default and return our default as a result of this operation. And we assign it to value of z. So z, as a result of this, uh, nil coalescing operation will be equal to value of x which is our default and is equal to 2. Now if we reassign uh, a value to if, a, if we reassign the value of y to 20 and change it from what it used to be which was nil and we apply the nil coalescing operator again y here when it's checked uh, to to see whether it contains a non-nil value is equal to 20 so it contains a non-nil value and because this condition here is true we return the unwrapped uh, unwrapped value of our first parameter in which case in this case we are returning the unwrapped value of y which is our uh, optional param parameter and the value of, of that is 2, 20 so as a result the 20 is returned and assigned to z and the value of z as shown here is equal to the unwrapped value of y which is equal to 20. Range operators 
in Swift are shown are used to um, set uh, a range of values starting from a minimum value and ending uh, at a maximum value. There are two types types of range operators. One is called closed range uh, operator. Um, and the symbol for which uh, is three dots as shown here. Uh, the meaning of this is that our range is equal to a, a plus one, a plus two, up until b. Also to be noted here that a and b are both integers and a is less than or equal to b. The second type of range operator in Swift is half open range, which is shown by two dots followed by the less than sign. Again, A and B are integers and A is less than or equal to B. And the meaning of this is that we take the range A, A plus one, A plus two, up to B minus one. So B is not included. So the difference between the half open range and the closed range is that in the case of closed range both the range limits meaning A and B are part of the range whereas in this case in the case of half open range A is only part of the range B is not. Um, the range operators are mostly used as the range for uh, for a loop counter. Uh, although we haven't actually uh, looked at for loops, we just I'm just showing the idea of a for loop here. So we are saying that for a counter, which is a parameter of the loop, in the range one to one hundred. Uh, inclusive, we repeat whatever appears in the body of our loop. So this do something refers to the body of our loop. So this thing is repeated a hundred times. The advantage of this is obviously the shorthand. So instead of writing this thing as part of our code a hundred times, we just represent it by these two, uh, you know, just a handful of Line, handful of lines of code. Logical operators uh, are used to modify or combine Boolean values. There are three types of logical operators in Swift, logical not, logical and, and logical or. Logical not is shown by symbol exclamation mark. Um, as it can be seen here, it's of type prefix, where A is a Boolean value, and this thing is read as not A, means opposite of A. So if A is true, not A means false, and if A is false, not A means true. Logical AND is shown by double ampersands. It's again an infix. A and B, the parameters, are both booleans. The return value of this thing is true if both A and B are true. Otherwise, this operation returns a value of false. Logical OR is shown by two parallel pipes, or these two parallel lines. Again, an infix. And again, A and B, the parameters of this operation are both Booleans. A or B uh, is false if A and B are both false. Otherwise, A or B is true. Here's an example of the uh, not logical operator. 
we are having a constant a which is of type boolean and its value is initialized to be equal to false then a second constant b which is said to be equal to not a and because a is false not a will be true as a result b will be true the and logical operator uh, is shown here we have an example uh, for, for the and logical operator where a and b are declared and assigned the values of false and true respectively then a third uh, variable called C is declared and assigned a return value of A and B because A and B is only true if both an A and B are true the result of this is going to be false because A is false so as a result of this operation C will be set to be equal to false and here's the example an example of the OR logical operator in this case we have A and B as constants and they're both true and as A or B is true if both A and B are true so the return value of this A or B is going to be true and as a result C will turn out to be true. We can also combine uh, logical operators. If we just use them without using any parentheses like this A and B or C and D, Swift will read this from left to right so A and B is first evaluated and whatever result is returned it is used to evaluate A and B which is the result we, we just obtained here and we OR that result uh, with C uh, it should be noted that A and B is itself uh, a boolean so we are oring one boolean with another as we did before so whatever result this generates uh, that is going to be used to evaluate um, the result that we obtained here and it with boolean value d uh, please note the use of uh, parentheses uh, and the colored code that I'm using. So in this particular case, I'm grouping A and B with white parentheses. Then I'm using red parentheses to to confine uh, these values. And finally, I'm yet I'm not using. Uh, uh, third set of parentheses to confine D and this the contents of this uh, red parentheses but uh, the parentheses that I, I'm using here are meant to clarify the grouping that are actually used when Swift sees something like this we could also use um, parentheses if we wish uh, when we writing the code um, for instance in the case of the above case if you wanted to just um, clarify this and make this more readable we could have written it like this which is exactly the same as this so this means that the AND is applied to these two or is applied to the result of the AND operation and C and then whatever is generated here uh, is ANDed with D but it is it is important to note that when we use parentheses 
for clarification purposes, uh, we can't use the parentheses just at any point that we wish. Uh, we have to make sure that where we use the parentheses, parentheses uh, enables Swift to apply the operations where they're meant to be. So for instance, if you use the parentheses uh, like this, the output of this, the outcome of this, is not going to be the same as the outcome of that. Here what we do is we apply uh, the AND operation to A and B. We also apply the AND operation to C and D. And the results obtained from here and the results obtained from there, then we or, or those two results with each other. So that is that would be different to uh, the outcome of this operation. This brings us to the end of our tutorial on Swift operators.